Welcome back, football fans. We're the Hate Watchmen. Chris Billings here, your host for the Spread Show with Anthony Reyes, also known as Tony Parlay, joining us. It's week 10. This is the Spread Show. I can't believe it's already week 10. We're more than halfway through the football season. Hey, I, it's been a journey, Tony. How you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Happy to be here. Can only get better from here, right? I, 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 I would hope so. We're about to get into our records from last week, so I, I'm pretty sure that's what Tony's hinting towards. He did not have a good week last week. And so, yeah, let's jump into it a little bit. Tony, last week, <clears throat> you were eight and six in the spreads. Did all right in the spreads. We're tied. Both of us eight and six. Miller, ooh, three and 11. <laughs> he, he's, he's off right now. Um, watching like the Yellowstone premiere or something of that nature. He could not join us today. However, in the um, straight up pickums, Tony went five and nine. Ooh, bad, bad week. It was a weird week in the NFL and Certainly did not help Tony or his Dallas Cowboys, as you can see his shirt right there. Um, so yeah, Tony, talk to us, talk to us a little bit about week nine. What happened there? Tell us about the craziness in the NFL. I know you said it was one of the more wild weekends you've seen in the NFL in a while. Tell us a little bit about it. I saw it coming. I saw it coming and I did nothing. I talked about the underdogs coming back and roaring back and the sports books taking advantage of all these favorites winning. Do I do I do anything about it? No, I pick all the favorites like the sucker that I am and totally miss out on this underdog weekend again. I believe last weekend underdogs went 10 and four against the spread again. Just I'm just a, I'm just a freaking sucker, man. <laughs> just salty. Just a salty schmo. It, it was a it was a wild one. Um, as I said in our winners and losers episode, congrats to the four people that bet the Jaguars money line here in America. Um, that is a very accurate number that I got from my sources. Four, <laughs> only four people bet Jaguars money line. Um, once again, very accurate statistics that I got from my Vegas insiders. So. For the season so far, your guy over here, Mr. Billings, Bookie Billings over here, I'm 65, 69, and two, 47.8% for the season so far. Tony, you're in second, close second, relatively. It's 63, 71, and two. So you're two games behind me at the moment. And Miller, I don't know if he's going to be able to catch up <laughs> with only eight weeks left here in the NFL season. He has not made his picks for this week either, so that that might be a little bit worse um, come next week. But Miller right now is at 56, 78, and two. He's at 41.1%. Um, but, hey, Miller, new to the spreads this season, us gambling uh, degenerates have been trying to teach him about it. He's more of a fantasy football guy. Um, we accept that here. We accept anyone that plays fantasy football. You're different, but we accept you and your beliefs. Um, you know, we're all inclusive here at the, the Hate Watchmen Spread Show. So, hey, you know, fantasy football is your thing. You know, there's an ass for every saddle, as they say. <laughs> Let's yeah. jump into <laughs> week 10. <laughs> Uh, fantasy is your thing we don't really want to hear about it but go ahead and let that be your don't thing on the fucking side. care about it don't care about your lifestyle your fantasy lifestyle but hey do you in the privacy of your own home <laughs> <laughs> all right so first game that we have for week 10 thursday night football we have the baltimore ravens visiting the miami dolphins Baltimore Ravens are favored by seven and a half points. Tony, who do you got in this game? Ravens. Fuck that Dolphins team forever. <laughs> wow, strong. Coming in strong with that Thursday night game. Um, a little hatred towards two a time and the Dolphins. 
they've they've definitely hurt Tony in the spreads this season. I am actually picking the Dolphins for a little bit of an upset here. I think Lamar Jackson has some fun on South Beach the night before, has a few cocktails, doesn't play as well the next game. You know, this used to happen to our friend Tom Brady when he played in Miami. Um, he weirdly was just a little off in those games and would lose them. I think the same happens to Lamar Jackson. I think that the Dolphins cover on this one. So already off to a differing opinions with the first game of the week. Next game, a familiar team of yours. Cowboys, once again at home, after getting their ass beat by the Denver Broncos last week. Um, they got the Falcons coming into town. Falcons or the underdog here to Dallas by eight and a half points. Almost thought Falcons are favored here. I was like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? But no, Cowboys definitely favored here, eight and a half. Do you think your Dallas Cowboys will cover? No, no. I'm bitter about last week. Too much, too many points, too many points. They're not, they're not that good. They got around into form again. So this is one where the stars have like flipped, um, worlds have collided, and now we're, yeah, we've got differing opinions here. I was once on that Falcons bandwagon, been picking my Falcons the last five weeks, I believe, five or six weeks. I'm not picking the Falcons this week. I think the Cowboys, after getting their ass handed to them by the Denver Broncos, they're going to come out and they're going to show people who's who's boss, who's daddy. Um I, I believe that's a term I've used in past episodes. It's a who's your daddy game. Um, <laughs> Cowboys are going to show the Falcons, we're your daddy. And so I'm going with the Cowboys to cover with over nine points against the Atlanta Falcons. So next game, we have some divisional opponents here. we got the Jacksonville Jaguars going to Indianapolis, play against the Colts. Colts, double-digit favorite here, 10 and a half points. Looks like we're once again differing here. I have the Jaguars covering. Jaguars, hey, they've gotten better week to week. It's a divisional game. Um, Colts have bigger implications that I think they're playing for and might be overlooking this game. I think Jaguars cover. Tony, I've kind of already spoiled what you're going to say. Who did you pick for this game? I'm picking the Colts. They have to cover. The Jaguars aren't going to fall into another Josh Allen quantum leap twilight zone game <laughs> where all of a sudden the opposing quarterback doesn't know how to play. Like Carson Wentz may have his moments, but I think he'll be able to put up some points against that Jags team. I'm just not confident on that Jags team on the road. Colts had extra days to rest. Colts blew in big. Any of you red zone viewers, you got to see Scott Hansen have a complete orgasm over Josh Allen sacking Josh Allen. In that that Jags Bills game, um, some of us, the rest of us, were just like, "Hey, that's cool." Josh <laughs> Allen sacking Josh Allen, or Josh Allen intercepting Josh Allen. It was cool to see, but like, hey, let's calm down, football nerds. We're football goons over here, but sometimes those football nerds, man, they get a little too much. You nah. know, like, hey, I like Scorigami and whatnot as much as the next guy. Let's calm down, though. So yeah. Um, Josh Allen, I'll, hey, just announced he got a um, pretty awesome award this week. The Nickelodeon Most Valuable Player. So, yeah, and, and, and MVP, congrats to Josh Allen of the Jags. Moving on to Browns at Patriots. Patriots favored by only one and a half. Vegas essentially telling you this is a bit of a toss-up game. Tony, who do you got in this game? Patriots, Patriots win in this game. I have the Patriots as well. Um, I think Bill Belichick will probably make Baker Mayfield have a nightmare of a day. That's my prediction. Um, so, yeah, and I think Mac Jones is just, he's continued to improve game to game, even though he is a dirty ass player, twisting <laughs> ankles and whatnot. Um, I'll overlook that, but hey, <laughs> doing good, Mac Jones. <laughs> no Nick Chubb. 
got announced today he's on the COVID list. So that's a pretty big loss for the Browns. I really think that they're not going to be able you to. You think, recover. but then some guy named Dearness Johnson comes in the game <sighs> and absolutely kills it. Um, wonder who he did that against. But hey, moving on. We got the Buffalo Bills against divisional opponent, the New York Jets. Bills favored by a cool 13 points. Tony, who do you got in this game? Bills. Josh Allen bounce back game. I I I I want to agree with you, with you there, um, but I don't. I got the Jets covering. It's a divisional game. They're playing at home, and my boy Mike White I think comes out has a day. At least a, at least to cover thirteen points, if you consider that a day, which I think most miserable Jets fans at this point would consider that a day. So. Uh, Mike White, your boy, <laughs> can't even stay healthy through two games. Mike White, Mike White, bandwagon over here. Begin line begins here. Come on, people. This guy, QB one, Mike White, future Jets, Lions <laughs> at Steelers. Got the Pittsburgh Steelers favored by eight and a half points here. Tony, who do you have in this game? Lions cover, Steelers win. No more tears for man Campbell. Lions coming out to go ahead and compete in this game. Good fucking luck. I have been trying to ride this uh, Lions train to no end this season. I just continue to get it wrong. Nope. I think Steelers cover. They'll take care of business. Lions are a very bad team. Steelers are actually a really good team um, that are probably going to cause some noise in the AFC and honestly might be probably second or third best team in the AFC. Kind of low key, not people not really noticing. No. All right. No, <laughs> the Steelers no, I guess, suck. no, I guess no one agrees with me there. Uh, wow, tough crowd tonight. <laughs> Steelers suck. No, steel, no love for the Yinzers tonight. <laughs> you can't win games on taunting flags. Get the hell out of here. Yikes. I thought people would agree with me there, but I'm not. Um, all right. Speaking of disagreement, let's go on to the next game. We've got the New Orleans Saints going on against the red hot Tennessee Titans. Those red hot Tennessee Titans are only favored by three points. I have the Saints. I think that the red hot t- Tennessee Titans, eventually they have to come back down to earth. This seems like a perfect comeback down to earth game for them. Tony, who do you got? I don't think I'm allowed to pick against Ryan Tannehill anymore. I'm like obligated to pick the Titans after four straight times picking against Tannehill, being wrong four four games in a row. So uh, I'm I'm picking the Titans. All right, I I think I think Saints pull the upset here. Like I said, the Titans have just been red hot in less than a month. I think this might be the game that they're overlooking. Um, Jameis. Uh, or uh, no, we, we're actually going to have Simeon Simeon starting in this one. So, yeah, no. I, I'm sticking with my pick. <laughs> no, Trevor nope. Simeon, you can be a really good Tennessee Titans defense. I believe in you. The town, ta- uh, the town, town of New Orleans believes in you. Next game, sticking to the NFC South. We got the Buccaneers at the Washington football team. Tampa Bay favored by nine and a half in this game. Tony, who do you got? Picking Washington to cover this, despite that stupid clown quarterback for Washington wearing a Joe Rogan sweatshirt in his press conference. Oh, what the heck's his name? I forget his name. Taylor Heineke. There you go. Heineke. Clown show. You can't be wearing a Joe Rogan sweatshirt after all that Aaron Rodgers left. Get out of here. But they'll cover, but they'll lose. Come on now. I disagree with lots of games we disagree on this week. I think Bucks easily cover. Um, I'm I'm through saying that Washington has a good defense. They don't. Tony <laughs> Tony of past episodes. Go listen to that guy because he was correct. Washington football team is a phony. 
The defense isn't good. They're not good on paper. They're not good on the field. It's got the Bucks heavy in this game. I think they win by probably over 15 points quite easily. No Chris Godwin, no Antonio Brown, no Gronk. Some injuries to overcome there. Uh, yeah. Who, who's playing quarterback? Oh, yeah, Tom Brady. Yeah, that too. Anyways, moving <laughs> on. NFC South once again. We got the Carolina Panthers, struggling Carolina Panthers at the Arizona Cardinals, who are probably the best team in football right now. Cardinals favored by 10 points. We're in agreement here. Tony, who do we got in this game? And three, two, one, cards. Cards. Yep. I can't pick against Kingsbury anymore either. I think I'm done on that. I think I, I've, I've lost all my ability to pick against Kingsbury and the Cardinals. They are for real. They are legit. Freaking James Conner is amazing. Yeah. And, and Panthers traveling to the West Coast, having to play the late game. They're just, they're a dog shit team, to be honest. Like, Sam Darnold's got ghosts. Um, he's injured. He's out. Oh, yeah. Well, he's a ghost now. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> right. He has the he has the incomplete fracture. And they're like, oh, this guy couldn't even complete a fracture. I, I remember that joke. Good job, Internet. I like that joke. I chuckled a lot at it. So, yeah. Cardinals easily in this game. So next game, we got the Minnesota Vikings at the Los Angeles Chargers. Chargers favored by three. Let's let's dive into this game a little bit. Me and you both were just like, fuck this game. Don't want to pick this game. Um, looks like you changed your pick on this game. I'm I'm going to I'll give mine. I say this game's a push. It's three points. You know, this game is going to be decided by like some field goal. It's going to go to overtime or something. Both these teams just jinxed, talked about in other episodes. I believe winners and losers. Check them out below. Subscribe, like, comment. Um, but yeah, both these teams jinxed throughout the last few decades. This is going to be a push. So I'm just going to call it an outright push and maybe help, you know, liven up my record a little bit. Tony, you disagree. You changed your pick. Who do you got? You get more points for calling a push? Like, what's going on here? If it's a push, that counts as a win for me, not as, right. like, a tie. Right. I'm saying I'm just But you're ride. more likely you're going to lose that because <laughs> most true. of these games don't end in pushes. I, I see <laughs> We've only had two there. so far this year. I, I see where you're coming from there. I think that it's very likely that it is a push, but ah, Chargers just somehow find a way. I have a little bit more faith in Staley and Herbert to pull some shenanigans off and, and take care of business at home than the Vikings just choking away every game. See, both teams struggling at the moment, having having some midseason struggles. And so now that brings it to my team, the Denver Broncos, back at home. After a big win against the Dallas Cowboys, playing the Cowboys divisional rival, the Philadelphia Eagles, Broncos favored by two and a half. We're in agreement here. We both have the Broncos. Tell me, Tony, why you think the Broncos cover in this game? Eagles are dog shit. It's a bad football team right there, my friend. And they are still, it's going to be a close game. And the Broncos will probably win that by a field goal late. It will be a close game, but that Eagles team, God, they're yikes watching them on offense and defense. I don't know what their game plan is most of the time. They're just bad. I agree. I think this will be a close game. Probably be decided by the Broncos defense just because the Eagles are that bad. I would not be surprised if you see the Broncos defense actually score some points in this game. Um, I believe those would be the first that they'd score all season because, yeah, I believe so. So, yeah, bulk at the Broncos. Next game, the last of the afternoon games, we've got the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, this is probably the, the Fox game of the week, by the way. We've got the Seattle Seahawks at the Green Bay Packers. First off, do we think Aaron Rodgers is going to play in this game, Tony? Yeah, because the Packers don't give a shit about any COVID protocols. They would have suited him up last week. 
I don't think the NFL care. Like they, they want this guy back in there. Um, I'm pretty sure Fox executives called the NFL this week and were like, you better goddamn have Aaron Rodgers in that game. Um, don't screw us on this. So yeah, I think Aaron Rodgers plays so far. Green Bay's favored by three and a half points. That would indicate that Vegas thinks that he's going to play this week. So Usually if Vegas um, indicates that, that something's going to happen, it's going to happen. So we disagree in this game. Tony, who do you got in this? Seahawks, my friend. The return of the Christian oh, cyborg man. himself, Russell Wilson, is coming back off of his fancy little finger injury to go ahead and lead that Seahawks team to a little bit of an upset win there. Don't have Miller hair to do his usual Mr. Mr. Unlimited. I, I hate it. No, stop doing that, no. Russ. Just play football. I have the Packers. I think Aaron Rodgers has one of his usual games where he comes back and tries to silence the critics. And yeah, I think they're going to beat the doors off the Seahawks, to be perfectly honest. Seahawks coming off a bye, man. Come on now. Is that an actual term? Beat the doors off of someone? I don't think it is, but we'll roll with that. Um, That brings us to our Sunday night football game. The Chiefs at the Raiders, AFC West divisional opponents, Kansas City favored by two and a half. Tony, who do you got in this game? I have to pick the Chiefs. If you listen to our winners and losers episode, I buried the Raiders. They're dead. They're in the desert out there in Vegas. They're dead. Buried them. Chiefs win in this game. Got a field goal? A field goal? Come on now. Chiefs aren't that bad. Chiefs are pretty bad, to be honest. <laughs> um, watching their game against the Packers and Jordan Love. Yikes. Um, that just shows you how bad Jordan Love is and how good Aaron Rodgers is. It's a whole just it's like a domino effect. Of just all these things that it showed. But no, Chiefs, not good. I think Raiders, still a good team. I'm sticking with it. Derek Carr is leading that team. They've had some bad luck. Let's just write it off as that. <laughs> if we're going to be optimistic, they've had some bad luck this year. Um, But no, I think the Raiders keep it together. They win this game and and they kind of solidify themselves as the the AFC West divisional leader. Raiders good, Steelers good. Billions hot takes from this episode, everyone. Apparently, apparently I thought I thought more people would agree with me with these ones, but guess not. So that brings us to Monday Night Football, our last game of the week. We have the Los Angeles Rams at the San Francisco 49ers, a battle for California. The Rams are favored by four points. We're in agreement with this game. We both have the Rams. Tony, why do you think the Rams will win this game? I think they'll bounce back from that terrible showing they had on Sunday night football at home against the Titans. I did read a piece. It's pretty good. It was on the ringer talking about how Shanahan is just doing too much, um, too much player decisions, too much executive work. And he just needs to focus on scheme and offense and getting that run game going. But since he stopped doing that and started doing all the player selection and stuff that that offense has been bad. I sent that tweet earlier, Niners four winning seasons in the last 19 which like blew my goddamn mind because they went to the Super Bowl in two of those seasons. So I was just like, how has this team been so freaking bad for so long? But Rams bounce back. They are all in. Sean McVay gets this victory. First game, we might get to see Vaughn Miller play. Um, yeah, Kyle Shanahan. Um, we talked about this in Winners and Losers. Looks like the Emperor might not have any more clothes. Guy is looking like a little bit of a fraud and a phony. Big bat phony. I'm, yeah, I think Rams win this game decisively and Niners continue to just spiral and Shanahan's going to be officially on the hot seat. If he isn't this week, which he really should. So that brings us to the conclusion of the spread show. Our bye week teams this week are the Texans, the Giants, the Bengals, and the Bears. Enjoy your bye week, folks. Um, hey, and 
Andrew Miller, hopefully you're enjoying your bye week as well. Um, we need them from time to time. I know I needed it when I was dying on the toilet from the stomach flu that my daughter brought home from daycare. Don't ever do daycare. That's a PSA for this episode. Um, but hey, Tony, where can people find you? Plug some of your, your stuff. You can see some of my losing picks, TonyParlay.com. Follow me on the Twitterverse, at Tony Parlay. Just fade my picks. They're not winners. And I'm Chris Billings. I've been your host. I'm the boring one of the show. You can find me on Twitter at Billingspace, or you can find me at Instagram on Billingsgate. Like I said, the boring one. But now check um, out our, our stuff on here, our other episodes. Check us out on Instagram at Hate Watchmen. And yeah, we appreciate everyone that subscribes so far, watches our shows. It's been great. We're more than halfway through the season. Our first season doing this. It's been fun. Going to see you in week 11. We're the Hate Watchmen. This is the spread show for week 10. See you next week. And thanks for showing up.